Hey guys, what is up? Dave here coming back to you with a brand new video on the channel and today's video is uh, revisiting the Razer Phone 2 as you can see by the main screen here. I am going to be making this guide that is a little bit easier on rooting the device as well as still keeping your uh, backlit um, LEDs on the back of the phone. Uh, working and going over one of the problems I have currently to uh, make this all work. Um, currently, the phone will not com uh, not communicate with my computer for some reason while it's in bootloader mode, and I figured out the issue. So I'm going to go over fixing that issue with you guys first because I know a lot of you had that question in the previous Razer Phone 2 video. So... We're going to blank this display and we'll come back to it in a moment. As you can see here, on here, I am getting Android with a little yellow sign because it's other devices. It doesn't know what driver to install. So you want to go to Razer's website uh, right here and you want to view their documentation here and just click where it says here for downloading the latest USB drivers. From there you just want to extract them to a folder um, like I did. I don't know where I put my folder. Give me one second. Alright I found them. So you want to extract them to a folder. As you can see I have them all right here and then you can then use device manager to actually install the proper driver. So what you want to do is you want to copy this address bar, right click your update driver, and you want to paste the folder in with the little slash at the end, and then you can hit next. Of course it's going to give me problems again. Why am I not surprised? This little bastard. All right, I think it's because I probably already have the uh, driver installed, but there is a backup plan. You can go have disk, and when you say have disk, that doesn't necessarily mean you have to have the disk. You can also just paste that, uh, paste that thing in right here. Do not put the slash, and it will give you the option of your choosing, and you can choose Android bootloader interface. Now, this isn't going to fix everything. There is a step I believe some people are skipping in my original tutorial video on setting this up. And I realized that I kind of skipped it even myself um, on my own computer because I haven't used this laptop in so long. So, even though I got the driver installed correctly, I still go fast boot devices. That should say what device is connected. It doesn't, as you can see. So we're still missing something. And I realize this. Uh, move window. So I must have used like quick ADB installer to add the uh, information to my computer. And there is a lot of info actually missing in a lot of those ADB installers, like the 15 second installers or the one click installers. This is all you get. You don't actually get the full platform tools. As you can see, I have a lot missing. This is going to take a second. I should have moved this to the screen, but you'll understand in a moment and I'll show you how to get these files. So I need to replace these four files. That also updates my ADB, but I need to ADB kill server, ADB kill server. There we go. You have to do that if ADB is still running in the background. That basically just tells it to stop the connection. You can download that platform tools latest windows.zip um, from many places. I got it from Technastic, which all I did was Google platform tools because that's the name of the folder. You can get it from Google as well. I don't know why I didn't get it just from Google, but you know, whatever. You just click this link right here and it downloads the latest ones after you agree to everything. 
And that's actually what I already had was the latest ones, R32. Yeah, that's what I had. That's what I just moved over. So we're good to go. Now if I type in CMD fast boot devices, it sees my device because something here was missing. So now we are all set and ready to go on actually unlocking the bootloader um, and getting uh, a newer version of Android on our Razer Phone 2, as well as rooting it and using it for whatever we want. The reason I'm making this tutorial is because my previous tutorial was all about how to do this on um, Android, uh, the AOSP from Razer. And that version of Android isn't the best. It's really buggy. Razer never updated. Wow, my car is really stretched out. <laughs> <laughs> I had to scale it. Anyway, I had to scale the resolution on here. But the Android 9 on there, that's where they stopped the Razer Phone 2s. And the Razer Phone 2 has a lot of potential to go further than Android 9. I tried running Android 12 on my Razer Phone, and a lot of things were not working. So we're not going to run Android 12. But we are going to run Lineage OS. And... Unlocking your bootloader is super simple. Um, there's tons and tons of videos out there about it. I'm not going to go through those steps. I'll just explain them real quick that you have to enable developer options. You have to enable OEM unlock in your settings. And then you reboot to bootloader and you do fast boot OEM unlock or fast boot flashing unlock, sorry. And it's already unlocked. I don't think. Ah, this phone does have critical partitions, so I got to unlock those. I'm glad I did this. But that's basically how you unlock uh, partitions. And then it's going to wipe your device. If you do a uh, bootloader unlock, it's going to completely wipe the system and data. Uh, it's a security measure. But once it's at the erasing screen, hold the volume down, and it'll reboot right back to bootloader rather than having to sit there and wait for it to basically reboot. And then from there... Um, you'll notice unlock bootloader uh, unlocked on your screen and you can actually go in and start doing the proper steps for getting lineage OS onto your device so you're gonna want to do fast boot flash boot lineage recovery I do recommend making sure you're on the newest update for the razor phone but you are going to be changing pretty much everything anyway so it's not that big of a step, it's just more of like a safety measure. But we're gonna flash it, and then what we're gonna do is reboot recovery mode on the actual device. And I'm sorry, I don't have a camera set up at the moment. I only have so many USB ports, I don't have a dock, so I can't hook a webcam up for you guys to see what's going on on the phone screen. Um, you'll just have to take my word for it. I'm just, I'm fresh, I'm getting back into this. <laughs> Give me a break. <laughs> I'll remake this video once I have a proper setup. Um, my home out office is almost done. Uh, I still need to rebuild my desktop. The motherboard ended up being too small for my cooler and GPU to fit on the same motherboard because I have the gigantic knock to a cooler. And I have a full size um, AMD RX 570 GPU. So it's been fun. I think I'm having an issue booting. Give me one second. So if you get stuck at the Razer logo, just hold volume up and power for like 15 seconds, and then it will boot into the lineage recovery. So from here, you want to go to apply update. Well, in most cases, if you have anything on your device, if you're starting fresh and you just unlocked your bootloader, everything's erased already. You don't need to worry about it. You can go straight to apply update. If your bootloader was already unlocked and you need to start clean. So you want to do factory reset and delete all data off of the device. And then you can go to apply update, apply from ADB, and it'll put it in ADB sideload mode, which is really nice. ADB sideload. This is in my opinion, the easiest way to install ROMs. And then you just flash the ROM. And one thing I forgot to download was GAPS. I need Google Apps. So we're gonna go open GAPS. 
the Open Gaps project. I prefer Open Gaps because I feel like their website is the most user friendly. We need Android 11, and we're going Pico because I want the minimal functionality. So we're going to download these gaps real quick. I have a plugin that skips timers. It's lovely. You want to save it, don't open the zip. And one other thing I don't have actually is Magisk Manager. Oh, come on. Just work. So you go to releases on the GitHub page. You don't want 24.1, just get 24. Download the APK. I know. Download the APK. And then you're good from there. So keep an eye out on your phone screen. As this file transfers, it's actually eventually going to ask you a yes or no question. You want to hit yes. And I need to get those files into this folder. There we go. So I need Magisk and Open Gaps. And then I do have some other stuff I like to install. But that's more um, personal preference. But you can go, what's nice is just change this to .zip. Oh, I have a Mountain Dew in here. I'm so happy. It's 11 a.m. I should not be talking about Mountain Dew. <laughs> change that to .zip, and then the custom recovery will actually see it as a zip file and flash it normally, which is really nice. But this is almost done. The reason I'm not doing cuts or like speed ups is I want you guys to see how long this takes. Because if it takes any longer than this, which give or take a little bit of time depending on your computer hardware setup. Um, but USB is only so fast. So I want you guys to see how long this can potentially take in case there is an issue that pops up with yours. Because if an issue pops up and it's sitting here for, you know, 35 minutes trying to flash and it doesn't flash correctly, obviously you know there's a problem. You can leave a comment down below and I'll try to help you out. I'm going to grab my Mountain Dew real quick though because I'm super thirsty. So I'm just going to mute my mic because I want you, like I said, I want you guys to see how long this takes. I'm not going to edit or cut anything. All right, it's actually done. I'm back to the apply from USB screen, which you wanna hit it again. It did not ask the yes or no question here because it is a properly signed zip file, but it will ask it probably for gaps and most likely for uh, Magisk. But we're gonna hit apply from ADB again, and we're gonna sideload. You can skip this step if you don't want Google Apps on your device and you want to run it as kind of a security-oriented device. You can skip gaps and just not have gaps, and you can actually go download micro gaps and probably install that, which will emulate a lot of the functionality of Google Apps. But in a perfect world, you're definitely going to want like Graphene OS or Calyx, and there are GSI images of those now. So by the way, yes, it is asking about signature verification. It fails because this is not a properly signed zip file because it's a universal zip file. So you want to hit yes on the questions. And Lineage Recovery recently finally got touch working. So you can just tap yes on the screen rather than having to use the volume buttons and the power button to select. You'll see a little bit of an animation going on on the screen of the text rolling through and it trying to install gas, uh, gaps. If you get error code 20, you just need to reboot um, recovery and try it again, basically. It might be that there's just not enough space for it to uh, install on the system. So I'll go over with you guys how to make enough space in a moment. I'm going to double check it uh, myself with the video paused real quick though. If you need to reboot recovery, you can actually do it very easily by going into the menus and going to advance on lineage recovery and clicking reboot to recovery. And that should reboot the device back into recovery. So you can try again with gaps 
Sometimes it needs to boot um, to refresh any kind of stuff in the cache. I have never understood why it needs to do this, but it is what it is. So, all right, I'm going to try again with gaps because it should work. There's not a reason it shouldn't. I don't believe gaps are built in. Unlike how they are with uh, Pixel Experience, which is something I don't like on Pixel Experience, actually. If this doesn't work, I'll try a different ROM. Or I'll do micro gaps. Or I won't run it at all, and I'll boot the device and see if they are actually built in, and I didn't know about it. Installing core gaps. I think it just needed a reboot. It's going. I promise I'll get this set up proper so you guys can actually see the screens and stuff like that to know what's going on. But like I said, I'm not going to edit this video or make cuts or anything like that, except for where I pause to like grab my Mountain Dew and stuff. Because I want you guys to know how long this is going to take. And yes, the reboot did work, so just reboot recovery. Every device is a little bit different. You never know what's going to need to be done to install these things i'm guessing it needed a refresh to the recovery because of the uh operating system being changed so once more we're going to do apply from adb and we're going to install magisk because i like having root so adb sideload there we go and that's going to send over super fast I'm going to have to hit yes about signature verification again if you leave it as .apk sometimes it works and you can just drag it over and it'll still install but I think lineage recovery is very picky about it having a .zip extension so you might want to make sure you have the .zip extension and then the optional part of the video is about to be coming up where I go over what uh, APKs I install as soon as I install a new ROM on my device. So I'm going to pause my recording real quick. Um, I'm actually going to reboot the device into Android. Go to, uh, let's see, you go reboot system now. I'm going to pause the recording just so I can download some of those APKs because they're not actually on this laptop. So I will BRB. All right, let's go over what I downloaded. I downloaded Game Guardian because I like to mess with things, Lucky Patcher because I like to patch things, Blue Cord because I like modded Discord, Attaway because as much as I used to love AdGuard, it wasn't working for me. Having it on my girlfriend's phone was very strange as well because she would get instances where nothing would load. So we switched to Attaway since it's also on since she's also rooted. Using the root variant of Attaway, I've never had an issue, and I've been using it for about a month and a half now, as well as YouTube Vanced, and then there's a bunch of modded APKs I also install, like uh, Pandora modded, Pi Music Player modded, it's my favorite music player for Android, and Spotify. So, I'm going to go over how to make a batch file to install all of these, because... Like I said, uh, I'm going to do a little stab here. There's that company or website called Phone Lab Tech, made by GeoSnow, uh, that he charges people money, or somebody charges people money. I think he's only a developer there. Somebody that owns that company charges people money to learn how to make batch files, which I find very strange and all that because honestly I don't expect batch files to work in Windows for much longer with the ability on Windows 11 to run um, Ubuntu command line as well as PowerShell commands I'll be really surprised if CMD lasts much longer CMD has been around since like Windows 95 I believe so if it disappears soon I'm not going to be surprised but let's go over how to make a batch file for making all of these. So first of all, you got to go through the setup on your phone. I haven't done it yet. I'm just going to set up offline because I don't need to connect or anything like that. 
I'm going to disable all the send usage diagnostic data, use location scanning and freeing up space automatically. I'm going to skip adding a pin because I don't use one. I'm not going to help improve Lineage OS, even though I should probably do my part. I'm not going to restore stuff right now, and Lineage is set up. So, gaps and everything is on here. I see Magisk. Um, one thing I need to do is enable USB debugging. I forgot one APK, and I'll go over that in a moment. So I'm going to enable developer options, go to developer options, enable USB debugging. As you can hear, it's asking me if I want to allow this computer to connect. I do need the screen a lot brighter, actually. And it's all good to go. So I should be able to run ADB commands um, to my phone by USB. ADB devices. As you can see, there it is. So normally for installing an APK, you would just do something like ADB install. We'll do add away. You just do that, perform streamed install, success. Now Attaway is on my device. If you want to make a batch file, this is how easy it is. Right click anywhere, go to new, go to text document, make sure you can see file extensions, delete the entire thing and call it installer.bat. From there, you can right click it again and go edit showed up over here and this is how dumb easy this is go at echo off so it doesn't display these command line lines here and you can do echo installing apks echo hit enter to continue pause with the pause command that means you have to hit enter to continue and then you do echo installing blue cord ADB install blue cord to point O point APK echo installing game guardian ADB install game guardian dot ten one dot one 101.1.apk echo installing lucky patcher installer adb install installer man i can't type 9.8.8 .8. man i cannot type today it's because the keyboard is off to my right because i broke my actual keyboard oh, i found frank there is a little squirrel that I feed off of my back porch. I named it Frank, but I think Frank is a girl, so I need to change it to like Francine. Um, installing uh, Advanced Manager, ADB install manager.apk, Echo installing Pandora, ADB install pandora.apk. I am changing the name of that. I ain't typing out all that crap. Pandora. I'm changing this to just Pi Music. I'm changing this to just Spotify. So, Echo installing Pi Music. ADB install music.apk echo installing Spotify ADB install Spotify.apk echo success pause I like to add a pause at the end of all my batch files this is a very basic batch file you could make a menu and you could go through and you could do everything not really worth the effort here but as you can see once you put the pause here, you will actually be able to go through and see if you have any errors. So for running this batch file, dumb easy. As you can see, it opens up a command prompt by itself. Hit enter. 
and it's starting the installers automatically for everything I chose. Take that phone lab. <laughs> Look how easy that was. That was a four second tutorial that no one's going to see. I'll make a tutorial specifically for that though sometime soon. So for getting back into the swing of things with videos, I'm trying to decide on a video upload schedule. Should I do once a week with shorts at random? Should I do, should I try to do twice a week with other stuff at random? I don't really know. Oh, does Lineage not have knock to wake? That's really stupid. I need to make sure the Wi-Fi works on this phone. It does work on this phone. So yeah, it was a pixel experience bug. Got it. So if there's anybody out there that wants a tutorial on flashing GSI images to these devices, they do support them because I would like to do a tutorial on installing Graphene OS. Doing it via GSI is not as secure as doing it via like compiled ROM, but that's one of the things I plan on learning is how to compile my own ROMs. I've done it in the past. It's been a very long time. Glad I have a one terabyte hard drive in here, but I want to upgrade this to an SSD. Now that I need to, because it's got Intel Optane in it, but everything for this phone is done now. I just need to turn it on to always dark mode because I can't stand white background whoa okay please install lineage on these things i forgot an apk so if you go to the razor phone 2 section on xda somewhere in this section is a themes apps and mods i think it's in Logo Plus, here it is. So, you can actually go in, download this Logo Plus APK, and this will allow you to better control the LED logo on the back of your device. Uh, where is the download? Logo Plus Demo, is that it? Oh, that's for creating custom effects. Where's the download for this though? I forget. Oh, latest version will be downloaded from Discord, Got or GitHub, got it. So, as you can see, download Logo Plus, was last updated then. This is more specific to the Razer phone. I don't know what I just clicked, I don't know what this is loading, but we're going to minimize that just real quick. And we're going to do ADB install Logo Plus. And from there, you can actually make the back LEDs work, and you're all set to go. So I wanted to switch back to a Razer Phone 2. I've been using a OnePlus 7 Pro for a while now, but it's a Sprint variant, and anybody who knows the Sprint variants of these phones, they are garbage to put ROMs on, and I hate the OnePlus stock ROM. I really do. I really do. I wanted to go back to just something simple like Lineage OS. I am going to miss the storage because I have 256 gigs and on this OnePlus it's only 64 or on this uh, Razer Phone 2 it's only 64. Is my other one only 64 as well? Were these all only 64 gigs? I swear I have one that's 128. Huh, 64 gigs for my other one as well. I'll have to check my third one that's out in my car. I'm going to be really surprised if these are all only 64 gigs. I wonder. Do you guys want a video a couple months down the road from here? Upgrading the storage on a Razer phone too. And I don't just mean putting an SD card into the thing. I have micro soldering history. I could probably do it. Anyway, this is a 30 minute video at this point. I think this is a good welcome back length video let me know what you think about a video schedule i might try streaming again once a week doing things like uh i have a usb 
a video capture card now. Not a good one. Not a good one. Don't get your hopes up. But I own a lot of Nintendo Wii's. I own a lot of PlayStation 2's. I own a lot of PlayStation 3's. I'm about to buy 50 more PlayStation 3's. Um, have my Commodore 64. I have a metric butt ton worth of electronics. N64s, I have two of them right next to me. I have a green one and an original gray. Y'all want videos of modding these old consoles? I want to put HDMI in one of my N64s, and I feel like that'd be a great first project as far as like soldering on the channel because it's not an easy mod, but it's not a hard one either. So anyway, let me know what you guys think down in the comments down below. Yes, I know my channel was hacked. Leave me alone. Although, thank you to the ones who reached out and let me know immediately because I did not get a two-factor authentication uh, request. I'll make a video about it. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out.